We are back for our last devotion on the fruits of the Spirit. Um, today we were talking about gentleness and self-control. The idea behind gentleness would be that um, we can be loving and tender and calm and um, be very humble in everything that you do. A good verse for this would be, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And that's in Proverbs 15 verse 1. Um, <clears throat> so, gentleness, um, it, it is being loving and tender and calm um, in everything you say and do. Um, it's being mild. Sometimes in the fruits of the Spirit, you might even hear the word meekness. Uh, meekness would be quiet, gentle, kind of like a mouse. It's quiet. Um, I don't really like mice, but quiet and gentle. Um, you know, it. This, this Bible passage from Proverbs is a very good passage to remember. Um, I might even have to add that to our memory work for next year. Um, not yours, for next year. Because it, it, is a good, it is a good reminder that when you say something harsh or hurtful, it's going to stir up anger and someone's going to say something back. Um, even though we don't want them to say hurtful things to us, it's probably going to happen. Um, when you show someone that you're being gentle, um, you're, you're showing them love. Um, I know that I am sinful and I don't always remember that. Um, sometimes, um, I am kind of harsh, um, but that's who we are. We're sinful beings. Um, gentle words truly do calm a, a situation. Um, when people are upset, if you can stay calm, it's better. Um, because if you start saying hurtful things back to them, it's just going to make the matter worse. Um, so thankfully, um, our good and gentle shepherd leads us and shows us so perfectly how to be gentle and speak the truth in love. So what I thought I would read to you is I thought that I would read Psalm 23 because it is about the, sh um, the Lord being our shepherd. So Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I should dwell in the house of the Lord. So that's Psalm 23, and that really does tell us how gentle um, we should be, and that gentleness truly means loving, uh, tenderness, being calm, being humble, and, and everything that you say and do. Now the other portion of this <clears throat> excuse me, was self-control. Um, so self-control can be a hard thing to do. Um, when you have self-control, it means that you control your actions. Um, you control your responses. And that's what I always tell you guys. You know, when you get angry or whatever and you're like, so-and-so made me mad. Well, you're in control of your actions. You chose to let them make you angry. All right? Um, when someone says something hurtful to you, you choose to let that bother you. Are they worth getting upset about? Probably not. And whatever they said, they were probably angry at the time or jealous. Again, that goes back to those harsh words. When you say harsh things, it's hurtful. So self-control is basically if you um, are in a situation where you need to say no, because it's not something good for you, then say no. Um, if it's something good for you, then you should say yes. It means listening and acting the way God wants you to rather than doing what other people are doing. Thankfully, God wants to help us put self-control into action. And so from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we have, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Again, self-control isn't always easy. Um, 
we have to fight against temptations of sin. Um, we have to keep in control of our emotions, our thoughts, and our actions. <clears throat> but um, we don't have to do it by ourselves. Uh, God is there. The Holy Spirit works in our hearts to help us when we're tempted. Um, if you can do it, um, you should stop. Think about the situation and maybe even pray that God will help you do the right thing. Um, when you when you do that stop, think, and pray, um, it's very important because, again, if you're ready to say harsh words, that would be a good time to stop, think, and pray about that situation. Because those words and actions can be very powerful. And they can do a lot of good, but they can also do a lot of hurt um, if you're not very careful. So what I'd like to read to you is I'd like to read... Genesis chapter 3 and I know you're like oh chapter 3 it's really not as long as you think um, but in Genesis chapter 3 that's where we um, learn about the actions of Adam and Eve and um, how hurtful it really was now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made he said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of all the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to her eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Then they had sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to me who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you must go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return." The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living things. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flame sword 
that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So, at the beginning of this, we see the serpent being very deceiving, um, and Eve was tempted. Um, she should have, at that point, had that meekness, that self, or excuse me, she should have had that self-control, where she should have stopped, thought about what she was doing, and then prayed, so that she could realize that what she was doing was wrong. Um, we are like Adam and Eve now. That was the original sin, and we still have it. We are sinful because of it. So God put the Holy Spirit in us to help us with our self-control because we cannot do it alone. All right? We, we just can't. So please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please help me to have gentleness and self-control. I know I can't do it without you. In your name we pray. Amen.